What is up everybody? My name is Symbio, I am with T3 Gaming, and today I'm really, really excited to present to you a Star Wars X-Wing unboxing. This is the core set for Star Wars, Star Wars X-Wing, uh, the Fantasy Flight tactical space combat game for two players. Uh, this is second edition, which just launched September 13th. And this is the core set that you get. Um, and so uh, we are introducing Star Wars X-Wing to the T3 Gaming channel. Me and a bunch of local players in Chico, California will be playing the second edition. We're going to be recording games and hopefully doing some strategy videos and uh, really just dive deep into this X-Wing phenomenon, which, uh, you know, has been going on for a long time, but um, I was playing Hero Clicks and Star Wars Destiny, and I just didn't want to get involved in a new game. But now that second edition has come out, it seems like a perfect time to jump right in. So uh, this is the core set, which runs about $39.95. Uh, I got mine at Chico in, in Chico, California at Collectors Inc. Uh, that is kind of our main hangout for uh, X-Wings. So if you are in Chico or Redding or the 530 California, Northern California area, uh, hit us up on Facebook at 530 uh, Star Wars X-Wing to join our group. So uh, here we have uh, the core box. It looks beautiful. It's $39.95, which seems a little pricey, but ultimately you're getting two TIE fighter ships and a, a T-65 X-Wing. Let's go ahead and flip this over to the back real quick and take a look. Uh, I love the new minimal kind of black modern design that X-Wing uh, has, has started doing uh, for Fantasy Flight. I just think everything, the design of everything just looks so much better. Um, and this is going to give you everything you need to jumpstart your X-Wing game. So it, it, this is actually going to give you everything so that you can even just play it with a friend. And there's uh, the dials, the figure, the, the actual... Um, figures and then all the cards and tokens, dice and movement templates and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this open and dive right in. Uh, we are, we may or may not do a learning video, but in the description, I'm gonna put a link to a bunch of the other uh, YouTubers out there that I've done or are probably going to do X-Wing 2.0 or second edition um, learning videos. We might do one. Uh, I have only played a couple games of 1.0 and uh, um, and have just played one game so far of second edition. So here's what we get. What you're gonna get are these three ships. You're gonna get a bunch of cardboard punch outs and this is something you should get used to at X-Wing is whenever you buy an expansion, you're gonna punch out all these cardboard tokens and uh, they're gonna be ship dials in here and ship um, uh, firing arcs. So we're gonna go and put that aside for a second and see what else we got. We got the Fantasy Flight 2017 catalog, which I looked through, and a lot of it's kind of older stuff, so not that important you get. Now, the cool thing about X-Wing 2nd Edition is that there's an app for your mobile phone. Uh, there's an Android app and an iOS app out right now. Just search Star Wars X-Wing Squad Builder in both uh, Google Play Store and Apple Store, and you should be able to find it. And that will allow you to quick build or just build all of your teams. So if, you're, if you've played Hero Clicks in the past or Warhammer or those kinds of things, you're going to build your team and it's going to all fall within certain point, points. Uh, and it's, you know, it's nice to have it all in an app because they actually took all the points off of the cards. They used to have the, the stats on the, the um, little cardboard cutouts, but they took that all off because that way they could balance the game at any time. Like if Idenversio got super powerful or Vader, you know, they could actually tweak the points so they could balance the game so it couldn't get too broken or too overpowered or too unbalanced. So you're gonna come, you're gonna get some quick start rules here. I guess you get two unless they misprinted and that'll kind of show you how to put your, put your ships together your dials together and play a quick game and how to play so that's pretty cool you're gonna get a standard rule book and if you want a rules reference you're gonna have to go to the fantasy flight guide uh, fantasy flight website and then you'll get the full rules reference which is good for all of those um, you know just like any of these strategy games there's going to be a lot of rules discussion but uh, this will pretty much give you the answer to anything you need to start your game so definitely spend some time to read this x-wing 2.0 is really actually not a hard game to learn in terms of the core mechanics uh, 
uh, so just with your friend, if you guys buy this, go on this together, one of you guys can play Imperial, one of you guys can play Rebels, and what you're gonna do is you're each gonna play a different faction, and in this set, what's cool is they have this mode called Escalation Mode, which kind of like as you play, like one of your guys will get defeated, and you get to bring that in with another pilot that's a little more threatening. So um, you play until like the all of your ships are gone. So anyway, these are the special eight-sided dice. The red are the damage dice. And you'll see there it's like a hit. Let me actually pop these open, actually, if you've never. In case for those of you who have never seen X-Wing dice, you know, I'm gonna show you these. Because obviously there's a lot of people out there who already play X-Wing, and in our channel maybe, you know, you haven't played X-Wing before, so I'm gonna show you this stuff. Uh, this is a critical hit, which basically just means that, it, you know, something more significant happens to your ship when you get take the damage to your hull. This is just a standard hit, and then this is a focus. And a focus, if you are also focused, Focused, your pilot is focused, you can use that focus to turn that to a hit. Or in the case in Evade, which are the green dice, these are attack dice and these are agility dice for kind of like getting out of the way of a shot. You can turn your focus sides to evades and the evades will cancel out the hits. So it's a pretty simple and elegant system. So instead of like trying to hit a number on a defense side or something like that, you're just trying to get as many hits as you can and then depending on how many uh, green dice they roll or evades, um, that will, they'll escape that. These are the little kind of buttons that go into the dials here. And what I'm gonna do is I'll stop the video and we'll definitely look at the dials. I guess we should, what we should do is look at these ships. Sorry, I just keep looking at all the components. Let's take a quick look at these freaking awesome ships. Uh, one of the things I love about X-Wing, as with any miniature game, is that the quality of the sculpts are, I would say, the most important thing. So let's go ahead and, uh, Take a look at this. This is uh, Luke's Red 5. So I'm gonna try to get a nice close-up shot here. There we go. So this is a Luke's uh, T-65 X-Wing, and it really, really looks awesome. You've got R2 sitting in there, uh, and you've got the little Red 5 markers on the paint here. So this is from A New Hope. And uh, what's cool about second edition that they didn't have before are these S-foils, which can close and open, and it looks like mine is a, is mine a little tight? Let's see. Hmm, mine, had, mine does have a little bit of gunk in it, it looks like. Maybe just needs to be, yeah, there we go. Um, but it's pretty cool, because when they're in closed position, they will give you the ability to boost, kind of like go forward fairly quickly. And then when they're in attack position, they uh, kind of give you a bump on your attack. Uh, so it's pretty cool and you actually have to flip them or activate them during a certain part of your action So, uh, you know, it's not just for looks. It's actually functional, but these sculpts are really great and uh, I highly recommend uh, you know that if you play this game, you should play sculpts and things that you love because that, that definitely adds to it. So let's take a look at these are the TIE Fighters and apparently these are a little bit different in their uh, look than the previous TIE Fighters. These ones are a little darker gray, I guess. But uh, they don't have any moving parts, but these are the standard TIE Fighters. But they still look amazing. And like on all of these, on all of the FFG X-Wing stuff, the paint jobs and the sculpts are just spot on. So highly recommend it. Um, so you get two TIE Fighters and one T-65. And another thing that's really cool about the new uh, second edition is that the T-65 has some new maneuvers. So before I go into the dials, because I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this real quick and then we're gonna stop the video and take a pause and kind of put some stuff together. This is what's called the damage deck. And anytime you take damage, you're gonna like put these on your characters, your pilots. And if you take critical hits, they get flipped over. And that's when you get like, bad things happening to you. Uh, so if you pre-order this from a shop and they got the special T65 damage deck, then you're in real, um, you're lucky because that actually is a full-size damage deck that shows you what part of the ship actually gets hit. So that's pretty cool. And hopefully in the future, they're gonna release them for all the different ships. Uh, so this is like a direct hit. You get suffer one extra damage. So these are like the one of the worst cars to get when you take a critical hit. Um, but I don't really know how many 
cards there are. Let's see, there are 14 different ones? Yeah. So you can have things like a panicked pilot. Uh, and this is this adds the most thematic elements, blinded pilot and, and wounded pilot. So this is really fun is when you take those critical hits, which in second edition, you kind of take a little bit more critical hits because they reduce the number of shields that you have. So it makes it a little more the thematic. All right, and so let's go ahead and take a look at which characters we get here. So these are all the cards that come with the set. Let me uh, ratchet down the brightness here a little bit, just so we can get a better shot of the cards. Uh, this is Luke Skywalker. And uh, I'm going to try to go through everything without actually teaching you how to play the game. If you don't know how to play the game, uh, definitely learn, get, pick this up, learn to play a couple times, then come back and you can understand a little bit more. But this is the initiative value. It goes from one through six. The higher the initiative, it just means that they can fire first. They're kind of like the aces. Um, and then the lower the number, then they're slower in terms of being able to fire, but they actually get to move first. So in this game, what's cool is that you, if you have a high initiative, you move last and fire first. So you can imagine uh, that's the that's very strategic because then you can move and attack. You know what everybody on the board does. Anyway, Luke Sky Skywalker, this is Red 5. He's a unique character. He's with the Rebel faction. And he has an ability that says after you become the defender, before dice are even rolled, you get to recover another one force. And that's a new element of second edition. They're called force tokens. Uh, this little arrow means that it can get recovered. And basically, it allows you to turn turn your focus sides to hits or evades uh, without actually having a focus. So this on the side here shows you what actions you can take. That eyeball is a focus. This is a target lock action. And then this is a barrel roll action. And then over here you have kind of your stats. And the red is the number of attack dice you have as well as the firing arc that you get to use. And some of the firing arcs are gonna be like rear. Some of them are gonna be like turrets. Uh, you know, like the Falcon. Okay, so in this green is the uh, agility dice that you roll. So if somebody's attacking you, you get to uh, roll two agility dice. And then this is the number of hull you have, like how strong your, your frame of your ship is. Until, that's kind of like your actual life or hit points. So once that's down to zero, you, you die and you lose your ship. Uh, two, this is the number of shields you have. And then, and of course, shields always get absorbed first. And usually, unless there's like something that's unblockable damage. This is the name of your ship. And I don't really like how in second edition they put the name of the ship at the very bottom. I kind of liked how it was in the top and it was a little bigger uh, because I like knowing the ships uh, very clearly. And then the, every ship has an icon. So they use this icon on the cars and stuff. So Luke Skywalker is pretty cool. Let's take a look at the back. It just kind of has the cool rebel symbol. Um, and so what, the way it works is that uh, you've got pilot cards that go to a ship. So even though the ship dial is the same for everybody, it's like that's the ship, right? Um, the pilot has different abilities, but it doesn't usually ever change the stats of the of the ship itself. But as you can see, Jack Porkins doesn't get the two uh, force tokens. So, but everything else is the same. So Jack Porkins uh, is a is a, is a not as good of a pilot as Luke Skywalker, right? Um, so he's got a four of initiative. He's red six, and he has an ability that says, after receive a stress token, you may roll one attack die to remove it. So uh, stress token basically happens when you do something difficult, like if you do a K turn, like a move a four and turn around or like a talon roll, or sometimes other ships will stress you out, you know, that's like part of their ability. So when you have a stress token, you don't get to take an action. And in most games, you know, actions are really important. But Jack says that after you receive a stress token, you may roll one attack die to remove it. So on a hit result, suffer one um, damage. So you get to roll the die to remove it. You get to remove it no matter what, but if you hit, get a hit, then you take a damage for that. So, uh, so the other thing, these actions don't really change depending on the pilot either. So, uh, but what does change, and the only way you can see that in the app is what uh, that ship can have on it, like what upgrades, modifications, droids, that kind of stuff. So you're gonna have to get the app to look at that. So we got a Red Squadron veteran. He's a generic. Uh, he doesn't have any abilities. He's got a three initiative there. And so each of them have, cool art here. Uh, Blue Squadron Escort, he's a two, he's like the, and the lower you go down in these um, initiatives, because in a high initiative is definitely more powerful, uh, these guys are gonna be cheaper. So you can play like a bunch of generics, like four X-Wings or something, or six X-Wings. I don't know how many you could fit right now, but we'll see. So now we're gonna get into the unique, um, 
TIE Fighter uh, pilot. This is Aiden Versio, Inferno leader from Battlefront 2. If you don't, if you play that game, uh, Aiden Versio is really cool and Spoiler alert, like she's a she's a villain in the beginning, but she might change later. So uh, you will see if we're gonna get a different type of Aiden later, but she's really cool. I think she's a popular character. She's gonna be in Star Wars Destiny 2, so I'm excited to have her in X-Wing. She has a four initiative, which is not the highest. It's kind of like a little better than average. And she's got different actions on the action bar here for a TIE Fighter, which are a focus, a vade, and a barrel roll. So this is a barrel roll that was in Mood Sideways. It's like in Hero clicks you can sidestep well in x-wing you can sidestep too with your ship using a barrel roll so as we all know that's really versatile and the evade just being able to take evade to uh, automatically get rid of a damage so as you know tie fighters are really maneuverable they don't have any shields they are just fast and hard to hit and they do average amounts of damage but they're super cheap and that's what the they are in uh, x-wing so i universio's uh, ability says before a friendly tie ln fighter at range zero through one which is basically if you're touching a ship or at range one you would uh, would suffer one or more damage you can spend a charge and that's what that icon is it looks like flash um, and if you do prevent that damage so what that does is that once per game, she can basically make an attack as if it doesn't even happen. Like all the damage, it just gets prevented. So that is uh, pretty amazing. Like uh, you can just wait for the opportune time when they're about to take out a really important ship and say, well, as long as you're within zero to one, that attack doesn't even happen. So she's like the leader of her squadron. So that means she has to stay close to all of her ships. Uh, so very thematic, very cool power. Uh, all the TIE Fighters have two attack dice, front firing arc, three agility. So again, very hard to hit, you know? And then they have three hull, which is not a whole lot. And then one charge, which only applies, I think, to Iden Versio here. Uh, and that's the little icon. So let's go ahead and see what other pilots there, pilots there are. This is Valen Rudor. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Braggadocious Baron. And now, you know, a lot of these characters, I don't know if they come from canon or books, but uh, I don't recognize a lot of them. So let me know if you guys know who these people are, because it would be cool to learn more about them. So you can see he doesn't have the charge, but he has all the same stats and all the same actions. So the charge only came with Iden Versio's ability. But Valen Rudor says, after a friendly ship at range 0 to 1 defends, after damage is resolved, if any, you may perform an action. So that's pretty cool. So after one of your ships defends, like it doesn't, they don't have to take damage, then that ship gets to like barrel roll or maybe focus or take an evade in case somebody else is gonna shoot them. So again, uh, there's some nice, interesting Imperial uh, kind of handshaking going on, like to help each other out. And Valen's only got a three initiative, about average. All right, we've got a two uh, here for a Night Beast, uh, Obsidian Two. He, uh, pretty cheap actually, probably for getting an ability here. And you can see, I guess, yeah, the, the only thing that's changed is that, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no charge, but otherwise it's all the same stats. So after you full, fully execute a blue maneuver, a blue maneuver is just like a super easy maneuver on your dial. And it's the only thing that allows you to clear stress. And in 1.0, it used to be green. Now, thank you, FFG, because I am color, sort of colorblind. Blue is a lot easier for me to see, so thank you. Uh, it's now a blue maneuver. Anyway, it says that after I execute a blue maneuver with Night Beast, I get to perform a focus action. So that's pretty cool. That means I get the focus action uh, uh, for free, I think. You may perform a focus action, yeah. So, and then you can take another action. So anything that action cheats a little bit and gets a little more is very good. I think he's probably gonna be very playable. Next, we got a Black Squadron Ace who actually has a pretty decent initiative, no abilities. So uh, these are kind of your generics. So I think the Black Squadron Aces actually are probably where you could fly quite a few TIE Fighters. And then you've got a two initiative Obsidian Squadron pilot. And I think the cheapest is going to be the Academy pilot, which is just like the total scrub guy. Uh, he's got a one. He's always going to be uh, moving first and firing last. And if you can hit three damage, you could take him off the table fairly quick. So 
Uh, and you get, let's see, two of those guys. So, so just so you know, you know, if you want to fly a swarm of ties and stuff, you're going to need to get multiple kits here. Or um, I think you can also buy like the 1.0s and get the Galactic Imperial Conversion Kit, which has got a huge number of cards. It basically converts 1.0 stuff to 2.0 or second edition. And it gives you, you know, like they did get rid of a lot of the old stuff. So it's not like you're going to get a reprint or re a new version of everything but you do get everything that's legal in 2.0 or second edition. So, all right, so here, these are kind of the upgrades or modifications and stuff that you can put pay points for to put them on your ships so, and your pilots. It's just kind of like in Star Wars Destiny, if you play that game where you get an upgrade or you know something you putting you're putting it on that character well in x-wing when you build your team you're kind of like modifying and customizing your ships and your pilots and that's what i love about this game it's really fun just to kind of put cool weapons i'm going to put proton torpedoes on my t65 get it give him like uh, fire control systems or some kind of upgrade maybe a targeting scanner you know some an r2d2 droid i mean it's just so fun it's like you're modding uh, you know your vehicle right and then you get to fly it out there and see how it does and so it, you know it plays very differently than a card game it plays like kind of uh, a balance between actually like flying something and like hero clicks or some kind of miniatures game so I think they did a really good job with the mechanic anyway uh, this is a smaller medium ship title it's called elusive it says when you defend you may spend one charge to reroll a defense die so it's just after you fully execute a red maneuver which is a stressful maneuver you get to recover one stress so it just allows you to uh, get out of the way um, you know if it you know it's a defensive ability there so and then here's another defensive title called outmaneuver while you perform a and that means a primary firing arc or your front firing arc attack if you are not not primary um, it's just front firing arc if you are not in the defender's firing arc so like if you're not in their firing arc but you there in yours then the defender rolls one fewer defense die so that's pretty cool you're like outmaneuvering your opponent all right and here we have another title called predator uh, while you perform a primary attack if the defender is in your bullseye arc that's what that means it's like the straight on then you may roll one re-roll one attack die so as we know in most games if you have dice any ability to re-roll dice is really good because you're not always going to hit what you want so this just says that if you have um, you know if you're rolling three attack dice with your x-wing or something and they're in your bullseye arc and you you know maybe get a three blanks at least you get to re-roll one of them or if you have two hits you can re-roll the blank and get another hit so it's just a very it's more of an aggressive card right so here we have a hmm I don't know what the oh those are force abilities these are force ability cards and so I'm pretty sure I mean I think most of them are gonna only apply to force like icons but uh, there's nothing here that restricts you from putting it on another ship or pilot so at the end of your of the engagement phase uh, you may spend one force if you do engage at initiative seven, which we know is like the high, really high because six is naturally the highest, instead of your standard initiative value this phase. So basically you can spend one of those force to kind of attack first, even before some of the highest characters or pilots, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and you get two of those. So, all right. So now we have a, a very thematic card, Instinctive Aim. And this is... Uh, Luke Skywalker, but it can be played pretty much on anything. Now, there is no restriction on these cards unless it says it, whether or not you should you can play it on that ship. So some of them will say small or large ship only, some of them will say rebel only, uh, but none of these say that, or at least these haven't. So instinctive aim, it's also again another force ability. While you perform a special attack, you may spend one force to ignore the focus or target lock requirement. So a lot of special attacks, which are kind of like, you know, proton torpedoes or turrets or missiles or bombs that you put on your ship, those are called special attacks. And most of the time they require something like you to have a target lock or you to be in a certain range. And so this is pretty cool in that it allows you to use your force to uh, ignore the focus or target lock requirement. So you're just like using the very thematic, you know, uh, use the force loop. So there we go, pretty sweet.
another force ability called sense uh, during the system phase uh, system phase will you know you, you'll learn that later but basically that's just going to happen right before you move all your ships i think uh, so it says during the system phase you may choose one ship at range zero to one and look at its dial so um in x-wing you have this planning phase first where everybody's like secretly picking what they're going to do with their ship on their dial and then they place them face down and then you have the engagement phase or sorry activation phase afterwards where things move so this is right between those two, and it means that a ship between zero and one, you get to look at that dial, so you get to know what they're gonna do uh, before they do it. Now, it doesn't allow you to change your dial, but it could change the way that you interact with them the next turn, like if you're gonna boost or take an action. So it says that if you spend one force, you may choose a ship at range zero to three instead. So that's pretty sweet. So normally, just at range zero to one, if you have sense on, you get to look at a dial. Uh, uh, but if you have, a, if you want to spend a force, you can do it from, you know, further away. So that could be very tactical for sure. And you get two of those. Uh, here is one called Supernatural Reflexes, another force ability. And this says here, uh, this is a restriction. It can only go on a small ship. It says, uh, before you activate, you may spend one force to perform a barrel roll or a boost action. That's what that action is. Barrel roll, I said, was like a, like a sidestep going sideways. And boost is kind of like going forward a little bit, like a one movement forward or to a soft bank on the left or a soft bank on the right. Then if you perform an action, you do not have on your action bar suffer one damage so um basically if you don't already have barrel roll or boost then and you do this ability then you have to take a damage but if you do you don't take a damage for it you just it's like giving you a free ability to do those things if you need to which may, matches this theme supernatural reflexes right uh, if you're a force user you can kind of get that for free so you get two of those now we get to the sweet stuff here this is the uh, torpedoes, or I think it's just torpedoes or ordnance or something. Um, so these are proton torpedoes, and there's not a lot of torpedoes in, in second edition yet, um, but this is pretty sweet. So proton torpedoes, you have to have the ability to carry torpedoes, so that's going to be in the Squad Builder app, whether your ship can use them. Not all of them can use them, uh, but obviously the T-65X wing can, because that's like one of their, its primary, uh, you know, best weapons. So this is going to show you what you need in order to, to uh, um, shoot those. You're going to need, it says it's going to require an attack and you're gonna need a target lock. It doesn't say you have to spend the target lock, but you're gonna to have to have it first, and usually a target lock is an action. So you have to target lock your opponent before you can shoot the tor torpedoes. And then you have these two charges, which just means that you get to have two charges on this torpedo. It's kind of like a counter that tells you how many times you can use it. And then it says spend one charge and change one of your hit results to a crit result. So this, though, only applies to this attack. And anything that has red dice here uh, with a uh, weapon means that you're going to be able to roll that number of dice for this this is a special weapon. So a special weapon that requires a front firing arc, it'll give you four red attack dice, and you have to be within two or three range. So you can't be at one range or zero range when you use torpedoes, you have to be a little further away. And then this little missile icon uh, means that you don't get a range bonus. So in X-Wing, if you're just using your primary weapon, you actually get a range bonus if you're super close, which is like range one, you get an extra attack die. And then for the defender, you get a range bonus if you're three away from an opponent who is attacking you you get an extra evasion or agility die so this uh, on a torpedo just means that those don't even apply so even if you're range you know three it's still four dice which is pretty sweet so uh proton torpedoes super good and you can use it twice there isn't any way to uh replace that which is probably good for the game a balancing element you only get one which is kind of sad but you only have one uh, T-65, so. Uh, here we got an R2 Astromech, just a generic R2. Also has two charge tokens on it, which are counting the number of times it can use something. And its ability says, after you reveal your dial, you may spend one charge and gain one disarm token. And a disarm token basically just marks that you can't attack that turn. So basically you're spending a charge, you can't attack that turn, but you get to recover a shield. So I'm pretty sure that's like R2-D2. This isn't actually R2-D2, and we will see what R2-D2 does, I think. Yep, there we go. So R2-D2 
as rebel only. So you can see uh, this guy you can put on anybody. R2 you can only put on rebels, which is good because that's that makes sense. We don't want freaking R2, one of our best uh, droids out there working for the Imperial Empire there. So uh, we've got, he's also unique, so you can only put one on your ship. Uh, he's got three charges, and it says after you reveal your dial, you may spend one charge and gain one disarm token to recover one shield. So he can do it three times, so he's just a better R2 droid, right? So then we've got the R3 astromech. Uh, you may maintain up to two locks, two target locks at a time, and usually you can only have one. Each lock must be on a different object. After you perform a target lock action, you may acquire a lock. So that's pretty sweet. So the R3 essentially allows you to double lock at, in one action, but it has to be two different. So if you're going to want to run your proton torpedoes at somebody, having an R3 droid would be very helpful because then you can lock two different uh, enemies. And, you know, even though you have one attack per turn, next turn you could fire on somebody else without having to take a lock. So R5 astromech has two charge and uh, his action is spend a charge to repair one face down damage card. So a face down damage card is basically like what happens when you get a critical hit, like that direct hit we saw earlier. So this basically allows you to fix it. So you just spend a charge and the R5 astromech will make that uh, go away. So usually like with a direct hit, it's probably not gonna matter that much, but there are other ones that have ongoing effects. So, um, and I'm not sure if with a direct hit you can like turn it and then just spend a charge to get rid of it. Uh, but I think it's pretty much the same thing since it's just another another damage die, another damage card. So action here says repair one face up ship damage card. Um, so a face down damage card. Oh, I guess basically you can just heal yourself with that first one. And then the face up is a critical hit, is repairing it, is basically turning it into a regular. So sorry for that. Uh, that was a mistake, but now, hopefully that, you guys understand what that does. We've got R5D8. He's got three charges. You get to spend a charge to repair one face down damage card. And then uh, he has an action that says repair one face up ship card. So this is the same thing as the R5, except he gets three charges. So that makes sense. It's kind of like these, these are like more unique droids that have better personalities. They do their job better, right? So, all right. So now we have a modification. That's what these uh, tools are here. The small ship only afterburner. So he's got two charge. After you fully execute a speed three through five maneuver, which is a fairly you know, fast or long maneuver, you may spend one charge to perform a boost action, even while stressed. So normally when you're stressed and you have that red token on you, you can't take an action, but this afterburners allows you to take an action. So pretty cool. And anytime you basically get to get that free boost when you need it. And so uh, going five and doing a boost, that's huge. That's like a very alpha strikey sort of uh, upgrade here. So now you get into some defense upgrades. Whole upgrade just gives you plus one whole so it's just increasing your your uh, life points um, by one and this costs uh, it's a variable cost upgrade just like the shield upgrade that's more based on how much agility you already have naturally so they're doing that just to balance it so you can't just like tack on a whole bunch of hull and shield upgrades to something that already has like you know hard to hit so um, you'll have to check the squad builder for that uh, then same thing with the shield upgrade now. So which is better? Well, like shields absorb damage uh, before they do critical hits So like a critical hit to a shield is the same thing So it's probably better to use the shield upgrade. It's probably gonna be more expensive But there are probably some reasons why you may want a, a, a Beefier hull versus a more just shields. Maybe there are cool abilities that play off of that. I don't know so here's what I was talking about, the S, the server motor, S foils. This is what happens when it's open. It just says you can flip the card over. It can only be played on a T65 X-Wing. And then this is when it's closed. So when it's closed, it's not in uh, the attack position. It gets the boost ability. And this is called a linked action. So if you take a focus with it, you can also then boost, but it'll be a stressful action. Uh, so this is where it's saying is while you perform a primary attack, roll one fewer attack die. So it's actually 
actually a negative effect when you're in this uh, closed S foils position for attacking. So that's one of the things I, it's hard for me to remember is to flip this card. But I think it's I'm learning that it's better to keep them open and then before you activate, then you just flip it closed if you want to do one of those boosts. So, all right, so almost done with these cards. These are the quick build cards. And basically they're just kind of giving you cool teams or quick builds with, uh, you know, upgrades and saying this can, th this is Luke Skywalker. He's got the S foils, Proton Torpedoes R2 and Instinctive Aim, the force ability. And this little kind of bar tells you their threat level. So the higher the number, uh, the more of a threat that that build is. And so if you match up that build with another build, you can have a more balanced game. But this is all designed for that in escalation game. So it's pretty cool. You should definitely check those out. All right, so I'm gonna stop the video real quick and we're gonna pop out some of those and I'll show you the rest of the stuff in a minute. All right, everybody, I'm back again. And uh, this is pretty much everything put together. Uh, here you have the uh, dials, the ship dials. And as you can see, this is the TIE LN fighter. So each ship will have a dial like this. And on your dial, you will have these pretty cool movements. Uh, basically, you, when you're planning your movements, this is kind of be how the ship is gonna fly. And you're going to roll this dial around. And what's nice about second edition is you get to see all the different movements you can do. The red movements are stressful maneuvers. Like I said, there's the Choreo Grand turn, which is the K turn. Allows you to kind of go four out and turn around. Uh, and the uh, blue maneuvers are gonna be the easy ones, so they will clear your stress. So when you're planning, you're basically gonna pick a maneuver and then put it face down, and then when you go to the activation phase, you'll flip it up and say, okay, I'm doing a two forward, and then you'll do the movement. I'll show you in a second. Uh, so these are the figures put together. They come with these little small bases, and different ships have different bases. This is a little marker so that if you're playing a bunch of the different and actually, you have to put a marker in now because they use the markers for target locks. And that's this token over here. So if I'm gonna, if this tie is gonna target lock somebody, that one corresponds, corresponds to him. And then I'll put a red one on somebody else or a white red one on somebody else to mark who, who uh, is targeted. So pretty cool. Uh, there's the X-Wing. And on top of these, let me just go ahead and take one of these off and I can show you. Put him down for a second but essentially this is uh, you're going to get all of the different pilot cards so you're going to get pilots cards for each ship that you have and that way this will go to identify that pilot because uh, maybe their arc is different it'll also show the initiative on here and the ship icon and so you're just going to put it on the base and then put your little plastic pins in here which hold the ship and you can actually decide if you want them to go uh, you know two pin high or one pin high because if you're flying a bunch of them, having them all the same can sometimes be annoying trying to find, you know, trying to pick them up and have them bump each other. Um, so you, can, you also get uh, six obstacles and uh, you'll get three asteroids, that are, those are these, and then you'll also get three debris markers. And debris markers and asteroids sort of do different things. You obviously don't want to fly over them or crash into them in general. So that's why you got to get good at flying. And I will say that's the most fun of this game is just learning how to fly because it really does feel like you're learning, you're literally learning how to fly these vehicles around and they do different things and learning your dials and knowing what your vehicle can do is huge. All right, so these are all the different movement templates. As you can see, this is a soft one bank uh, and it has a new line in the middle which helps you kind of track exactly where it's gonna be. If it's gonna hit something, you'll know exactly where to stop it. Uh, and you know these are the soft uh, banks and these are the hard banks and these are the one straights and the Choreo Grand turns here and these are also what they call a talon roll where you're actually this is a talon roll where you actually get to go forward and flip your ship around so very powerful and the new X-Wings have that right there that icon there and then this is your range marker one two three is what we were talking about before anything within range one uh, You'll usually get a range bonus uh, To roll one more attack die and then on the three anything past two you they're gonna get a defense die So you're gonna measure like from the, in the firing arc from the closest tip of your ship to the closest of the Opponent ship that you're trying to hit so I am going to just kind of put these over here for a second 
and move these dials out of the way. And these little cardboard icons come with it and they have these cool plastic faction based dial holders that you can put these in and they kind of just look a lot nicer. It's just kind of an accessory that you can get. Uh, these are kind of like placeholders. So when you have a lot of ships on a board, sometimes you need to move one out of the way to figure out where you're gonna go. So you'll put this on the corner and then move the ship and then put it back exactly where that is. So it's just a corner marker. So what I wanted to do just kind of real quick is show you a basic movement. So uh, T65 X-Wing, you know, one of the planning stages we're gonna start out, you know, is I'm just gonna do a pretty uh, simple, we're gonna just do a two hard right turn. So I'll pick my maneuver and I'll place it face down. And then when the uh, activation phase comes up, I'll flip it up and it'll show that I'm doing a two hard right. And obviously I wouldn't move it, but I'll find my movement template here and I will place that in the front. I'll hold my ship down tight because in X-Wing, you really want to try to be as precise as possible, not try to move things around because that's how the game, you know, if you move things around, then, then things get real sticky and shady as to whether you were here or there. So what I'm going to do is then hold this template down and move it over to the very end. There's little notches here. And then I will have completed my two hard right. So it's pretty cool. Like, and then you can do things like a boost forward, a barrel roll in 2.0, as we were talking about, you're gonna use this one and you can go sideways. If you're a small, then you use the this length direction. If you're a big or medium ship, you're gonna use this way. But so in 2.0, second edition, if I wanted a barrel roll, I'd have to line that up to the line there exactly, or the front or the back. So I could line that up in the middle here, barrel roll over and choose to end up in the front here, back here, or the little line there. So pretty cool, it's like a sidestep I said. Uh, so, and you, get, you also get, uh, these are the escalation tokens. These are like hyperspace jump markers. And so when you play the escalation format, you'll kind of like your new ship will appear on one of these after you roll. This is the first player marker. It just kind of goes, it's so that you have a way of marking who was the first player. Uh, these are again, those uh, IDs that you're gonna put on your figures. This is an ion token. Ionizing an opponent using like a special weapon or ability would make it so that next turn, they don't actually get to choose their movement. It forces them to go one forward. So it's a really good control tactic. This is just a token that uh, tells you whether that person has a critical hit on them. That way you can remember to check their critical hits in case they have something that's active. These are those stress tokens I was saying. So if he did that, uh, like a three talon roll, he would be stressed out. You'd put your stress token there and that would remind you that you can't take an action with that, that ability. These are those force tokens, uh, sorry, focus tokens. So as one of your actions, you could take a focus. Uh, this is disarm. It means that they can't attack. Uh, these are those target locks. So if um, I'm a one and I'm playing white side, my target lock would be a red white one. And if I wanted to target, Luke wanted to target lock Valen, I would just put that on them. And then I know that that's Luke's target lock. So, cause you could have multiple target locks of different people. It's good to keep track of it. This is an evade token. These are the sh new shield tokens and you will put those on your cards. And then when you get your shield is damaged or taken um, taken damage, then you'll flip it to the red. And they wanna do that in case you wanna track like um, a, a shield that might come back, like that R2 droid. So that way you just flip it back over. Uh, these are the force tokens. And again, flip it over, it's red and you've used it. And these are those charge tokens. Again, flip them over, they're red. So uh, that is pretty much it, you guys. Um, I just wanted to say this is a really fun game. I had a lot of fun with it first. I really highly recommend you guys give it a try. It's 40 bucks. You can have a lot of fun with just this set. And, and what I like about Star Wars X-Wing is that it's not something you really have to collect everything. You can if you really want to be a collector, but if you just love uh, scum villainy or or uh, the new factions coming out are going to be Resistance First Order, there's going to have Clone Wars, uh, I think they're going to have Separatists, and I think Jedi Republic. So if you just want one of the factions, I would say just buy the ships you love in that faction and just play those for a while. I think that the best part of this game actually for me so far has just been to fly the same ships uh, over and over because it really is one of those games where you can get better at it the more you play it. And it's not always just about building the new most broken deck or the new most broken team. It's really actually about getting better as a pilot, literally, 
to uh, be better at flying, and I think that's what this, this game excels at. So obviously if you have cool upgrades and cool abilities that synergize, that helps too, but, and, and as always, it is a dice game, so if you're always rolling blanks, there's not a lot you can do either, but uh, you can you know get re-rolls and stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long one, but I, love, I, I wanted to share this with all of our viewers uh, because we are going to be doing T3, is going to be doing X-Wing content, and I hope you're excited about it as much as we are. Uh, we're going to try to do our best to bring you good videos that are helpful for new players, as well as hopefully some veteran seasoned players. Again, shout out to Krabok and uh, Harry Nick and... Um, X-Wing Junkies, and there's just so many content creators for X-Wing already out there, and so we're just gonna be the little new guy on the block, but I definitely highly recommend you check out all those other content creators. I will provide some links in the description below. So thank you again for watching, you guys. Uh, let me know what you think about X-Wing in the comments below, if you're excited or interested in playing this game, or even if you're not, and maybe why you didn't like, uh, like it. Definitely share that too if you want as well. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it and we'll see you next time on T3.